hey everybody welcome to my channel today is april 9th happy friday everybody so recently i did a stream and i promised that i'm going to do a garden update or garden tour so today i have some free time and i'm going to do just that so uh, a lot of things are a little bit messy right now because i'm still trying to figure out where things are gonna go so uh <laughs> excuse the the mess okay let's start with some of the plants that i have here these are just temporary areas where i put some of these plants before they go into the place where they need to go so i have a lot of peppers right here some aloe that I'm, I'm giving away and some of the plants that i overwinter some fruit trees that i thought were dead and they came back to life so i have two oranges this is the owari uh, um, what is what are the mandarin or satsumas i think and then that is the uh, uh, texas um, arctic frost the arctic frost there it's one of the coldest uh, uh, mandarin variety that you can buy and I have over there, that is my uh, Djibouti Kaba that I've been growing for the past three years for fun. Uh, I, I didn't think that I'm going to keep it for this long, but um, <laughs> it, this season is, uh, is third year, so I guess I'll keep it going. And some aloes. Uh, this aloe has been with me for a few years also. It put out lots and lots of pubs, and I've had uh, so many and that I have to dig out of here. I gave a bunch away. Here's the mother plant. And uh, while we're here, I'm gonna give you a bit of information about aloe, just to help you with, uh, with yours. Uh, aloe, uh, if you keep them inside for a long time, they get adjusted to the inside conditions. So when you take it outside, they're gonna have to get readjusted to the outside. So you're gonna get, you see these leaves here? That's almost like sun scald or sunburn. So they, they do burn, even though they're very tough plants, they do need a period uh, of adjustments. So if you have your aloe inside for a while, and when you take it outside, it starts to turn this color, that's because the sun is too strong. You have to take it out of the sun, put it in the shade, and then do that for about a week or so, or maybe longer. Then they finally get adjusted, and then they'll, uh, they'll grow new shoots. The new shoots will be green. So the old shoots right here, they're, they're pretty much dried and dead. You can cut those and the new shoots will be okay. Same with this here. You see how the sun burned this area? So that's, that's never going to grow back. So the new area down here, they're okay. So um, that's what's happening if that happens to yours. You see here, the same thing happens to these. Same thing happens to that. I'm just too lazy to move them around, so I just left them there. But you should keep them in like a shaded area uh, you know like morning sun afternoon shade for for like two uh, two weeks at least and they should be fine you see there's mine right over there as well same thing sunburn okay and here is a, a few more aloes that I left uh, in a in a shady spot you see how they're nice and healthy because the Sun is not beating down on them so that's why they look nice and green this area only gets afternoon shade so in the morning you get good morning sun for a few hours and then the afternoon is all shaded. So that's why they're beautiful and green. Okay, and here is a, a few experimental things that I'm doing. So I grew a bunch of seedlings all together uh, in um, these little containers inside. And then I pick a bunch out to put in hydroponic. And then I have nowhere else to put the other remainder. So I threw them in soil. So these here are the same age as these, except these were grown in hydroponic and they're spaced out. And these are all clumped together in soil so they don't grow as fast, but they are the same age. You see the difference? Okay, so here I have my solar power uh, systems and uh, it's basically using my pump right here as a solar pump it's not on right now because the sun is not on or the sun is not out so when the sun is out it will start to pump air into the unit and uh, i'll show you the root system just in case you're interested you see so the the water the bubbling action is not coming on right now because there's no sun 
and these are Chinese mustard uh, the other name for them is Gai Choi just in case you're wondering and these are Chinese cabbage these are the uh, Kyoto number three they're hybrids so uh, they're starting to form a head right here you see that they get tighter and tighter and tighter and then they'll make a head so these are napper cabbage um, varieties just different names Okay, I'll show you the root system for these as well. And there they are. Very low maintenance. Uh, the sun does all the work for me. Every now and then I'll come by to check the water. And if it's low, I'll drop nutrients in. And then I spray the water in there to mix it up very easy. And they just grow on their own. Just basically set it and forget it. Okay, here is another temporary area where I'm putting my peppers right now. Um, I have a bunch going on so I'll show you that in the pepper updates in the future okay and here is my giant fuyu uh, tree fruit tree and uh, it's it's grown pretty nice and usually I would chop the branch off right here because I want the shy shoots to grow this way and that way the tree has some equilibrium you know grow straight from the center and then sides come out it gives it a nice balance if it bows like this here the tree is going to grow kind of slanted and I, I don't really like that and the reason i left it here is because i wanted to see if it's going to give out a fruit because i want to see what a fruit look like so uh, that's why i left it there but it may not fruit at all uh, i may just uh, do air layering so that I can get a tree out of this before I chop it right there and I have my lemon or lime so my lime died because of the crazy Texas uh, winter storm so I had to replace it <laughs> the tree was huge and now I have to start over so that is the Persian lime my lemon tree was almost dead but somehow it came back this one was in soil I thought it was dead so I dug it out and when I dug the, 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 the tree out, the root was still healthy looking. So I put it in a pot. And thankfully I did that because it's coming back to life right here. It's still part of the, uh, the mayor's lemon. The bottom here is the grafted area. But the, the shoot grown there is actually the, the lemon. So it's, it's still a good tree. So I'll, I'll keep that alive for now. And I was growing these um, sakura sakurajima radish for fun and I, I actually wanted to grow the in here and then separate them once they get big enough and then i forgot to do that and now they're just super huge so these radish they can grow up to like 15 to 20 pounds the bulbs and um it's already starting to flower because it is so hot it, it does need a, a a little cooler climate to grow well and also it needs a lot of space because this thing can grow massive and I'm not giving them any of those no spacing and the, the weather is getting too hot right now so they're not gonna bulb up so I may just leave them there to get some seeds for them and here I have daikon radishes these are the minnowways and usually I don't grow them in five gallon pots but because I wanted to test to see how well they would grow but they seem to be doing okay. The bulbs are right there. So it's getting hotter now. So they're, they're going to start to flower. So uh, you can also eat the leaves. So I've been eating the leaves. And uh, once the flowers come out, I just pluck that off and eat that as well. And, and let's see if the bulb will grow bigger because the flowers are not growing. Same thing here. <laughs> oh, Sakura Jima radish. See, it started to flower. So I cut that off and I ate it. That one there, see, it's flowering right here. So when it starts to flower, it's not going to focus on bulbing. So you don't want them to flower. I might just cut that off either. And uh, see, yeah, they're, they're not going to grow any bulbs. It's, it's too hot right now. Okay, on to my fruit trees. These are my pear trees, the Asian pears. And this is the, uh, the Shinko, Shinko pears. The great variety to grow because they're really um, good to... Uh, withstand against fire blight so that's a good variety if you if you grow in areas where you get fire blights um, easily 
and I have a uh, video for all these pear trees coming up um, I've been recording it for over a year so I'll release that very soon those are Swiss shards that I'm just growing for now same thing over there and then a bunch of other buckets I'm gonna have to move these things around and that's my apple tree the four in one apple I got the the red delicious golden delicious gala apple and the Fuji the all-in-one uh, tree so this one was getting really tall right here so I cut it and I, I cut it so that the the buds right here is on the outside that way when it grows it's kind of like give it a more center space so wherever you top it the bow the bud is gonna grow on the next one uh, sometimes people pinch that off and they don't go down to the next one if you pinch that off it goes to the next one so depend on where you want the, 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 the bud to grow into a branch that's where you leave the bud so you see I left it right here and that's where it grew so I cut it right there same thing with that you see here you cut it right here so the buds right here are gonna grow I want it to grow on the outside and if you don't want it to grow on the inside just pull it off like that because I actually want it to kind of space out a little bit okay and in there I'm growing lettuce man I've been eating a ton of lettuce I just picked a bunch today and then these are radishes these are the uh, the dragon tail radishes and the, the the crazy thing about these is they look really strange you see they they look like this and you eat this <laughs> instead of the bulb they don't they don't produce bulbs they only produce the seed pod and uh, that's what you eat sometimes they call it rat tail dragon tail any kind of tail okay and here I have some more hydroponic setup this is the um, the float raft and I did a video on this recently and I guess this can be an update for that one because in the video it didn't grow this big yet so here's my solar pump when the Sun comes out it'll pump air into the unit and look how massive these things are I have uh, four plants right here I, I shouldn't have that many I should only have one but um, I've squeezed four in there and uh, it you see how it's fighting for space and that that is the Chinese mustard here see how beautiful that is grown in a raft system pump here and it's very easy if I need to refill I just pour pour nutrients in there and it flows to the top and here is the uh, the lime tree that that died and you see the Persian lime is at the top is dead the bottom is the rootstock I don't know what kind of lime that is but you don't want the rootstock because it's not the exact type it could be like a wild variety that's not going to produce the Persian lime and the fruits uh, are going to be um, not that great so I'm, I might have to dig this out or I can just let that grow and graft on uh, the um, the Persian lime onto that again so uh, yeah we'll see got some broccoli man it's, it's way too old now it's starting to go to seed forgot to harvest it okay here's my other shinko pear look how beautiful that is a few weeks ago it put out like a ton of beautiful white flowers so now all the flowers dropped so fruiting uh, it's fruiting now so I got lots and lots of fruit so I'm covering these up because sometimes the uh, animals or bugs will eat it so I want to save those and make sure they can become a nice flawless uh, fruit you see these are the fruit right here they are super productive I mean they're fruits everywhere so uh, with pear trees like these usually I prune a lot because if there are too many fruits on there they can snap the branches and also they don't grow very big if you if you let too many grow so I, I'll I'll prune a bunch of them out you see there's tons of little fruits up there but um see I prune out a lot of fruits already and the bags are the ones that I I really want to save I want to like as I mentioned flawless no blemishes and all that stuff that's why I put the bags there and these are just uh, jewelry bags you can get on Amazon they're really cheap you buy a whole bunch of them and they have a, a drawstring you can pull which is awesome you see this here so I, I've been using these for the past couple of years and it really worked and then at the bottom I have arugula and then I have some 
aloe you see how the aloe is burnt because <laughs> it gets too much sun but it should be fine now going forward okay here is another bed of just vegetables and as you can see i've been harvesting romaine i've been eating a ton of romaine give some to family so i've been harvesting so many they they keep growing back if you don't cut the whole the whole stalk they just keep producing leaves and these are salad bowl lettuce they're awesome and arugula these are uh, perpetual spinach from last season the, the the ice storm didn't kill this it killed the top but the root was still alive so it came back and there's some more radishes there some um, salad bowl lettuce mini arugulas coming out right there from the seeds that was over left over from last season and here is a pear that I grew from seed and then I chopped it off right here you see it and then I grafted on a, a new variety called the Hosui and this one actually fruited already but I pulled the fruit off because I don't want this little tree to fruit yet but there was a fruit or like a bunch of fruits actually and uh, I will show you where I chopped this branch from you see this here was the branch that I chopped off right here there's a top right there see that I chopped it right there and I took the top of that and I grabbed it onto that tree but this Hosui, guys, if you have not grown pears and you want to grow an Asian pear variety, you have to grow the Hosui because one, they are super productive, two, they are very beautiful, and three, they self-pollinate so they can just have their own fruit with you without having a, an additional pear tree as companion. So that's a that's a great overall so grow that variety if you, if you like uh, Asian pears and don't know which one to grow and you see as I mentioned productive look at that you see look at all those fruits and I'm gonna have to prune this off let's just pick up and throw them off because they're, they're gonna be so many and that's just a very small branch uh, again this is a four in one and this is the 20th century you see how they they look a little bit different the leaves are different this one's more bunched together and it also has a lot of fruits as well so I'll be pruning and then here this is the Jojiro the middle one here that's Jojiro got a few fruits it didn't it didn't fruit too much for, for that variety and here we I have the Shinsiki and this is also a self-pollinating variety, so that's also a good one to grow. But the Hosui tastes the best. Okay, so those are four. And then I have the rootstock here. It started to grow three branches. And I didn't chop those branches off. Instead, I took a different branch from another variety and I grafted onto there. Look at that. It's alive now. Look, even it has a fruit. Look at that. And this here is a Shinko, actually Korean giant. This is a Korean giant variety. I'll show you the Korean giant variety next. And here also Korean giant variety. And here, you see, here's another graft. You see that? And I grafted another Korean giant onto here. And I needed support because <laughs> I should have grafted down here. I grafted way up here. It, it may snap so that's why it has support right there and then at the bottom I have a lot of arugula guys arugula are amazing you can eat the leaves you can eat the flowers so I usually eat a ton of flowers until um, late summer when when they're just gonna become seeds and uh, that's when I allow them to go to seeds and they can just drop seeds and grow again next season but yes, arugula flowers are delicious. Nice and spicy and pungent. So you can actually eat them, the tender part, not the tough part. So you can fill them, they're tender, pinch them off like right there, and you can eat them. And these are succulents. 
I can't believe these guys are still alive. I left them here since last season in the snow, covered, and they came back to life. Nothing happened to them. Look at that. And these were all once a leaf like this. So I pluck a leaf like this and I put it on the soil like that. In a few weeks, that will become this. Not, not like that right away, but it'll grow a small plant and then months later it will become that. So if you want to grow succulents and you want to propagate them, pull a leaf and just put it on the soil like that. Sometimes I put them on top of a cement like here, like this, and it still sprout. That's how easy it is. Okay, here is another raised bed of uh, vegetables. So I have... Um, Chinese mustard, gai choy, just like the one in hydroponic, and also Chinese cabbage, same thing as in the, um, the hydro systems. And those things require a lot of time, like 90 to 100 days before you can harvest a big cabbage head. And here I have sorrel. I love sorrel, guys. These are just some of my favorite uh, plants or they call it herb to grow because they're lemony they're nice and uh, sour and they're also perennial so they will come back year after year after year just leave them here uh, harvest the leaves and they just keep growing and growing if you see flowers just pinch them off and they will keep growing leaves you see these were the flower stalk right here and I just pull that off I don't want them to flower, I just want them to grow leaves and so they'll keep growing and growing and growing. They need uh, lots of good organic compost and they will grow nice and green like that. And uh, this is one of the plants that will grow nice in the cool seasons, especially cool season. They'll do okay in the summer and they'll, they'll grow well into the snow and will come back the next year. So uh, our winter storm didn't kill those, so that's how tough they are. And these are Celtis lettuce. Celtis lettuce, also called asparagus lettuce, stem lettuce. They're a great variety. You can, you can stir fry the leaves, but the best part is the stem. So you just wait for the stem to grow and you, you just eat those. And to promote the stem to grow nicely and tall, you just pull the leaves off and you see, and you, you will expose the stem and they'll keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. And sometimes in the summertime, they start to bolt. And what I do is I pull off the flower and they can continue to grow the stems. But you, you want to harvest them before they start to produce flowers because then the stem may be a little tough. And spinach here grow. I love spinach because they're also one of those varieties that will survive any kind of conditions, frost, freeze, whatever, it doesn't matter. and my Korean giant pear. You see, look how beautiful this pear variety is. And uh, that's gonna be as tall as I'm gonna allow them to grow. I'm gonna start uh, cutting them from the top because I don't want them to get to 15 to 20 feet. Uh, they can grow pretty tall. So I'm gonna cut those very soon. But anyway, um, here, is the top of the tree that I cut, you see? There's a cut piece right there. And that was the, the top piece that I grafted onto the other tree. And then here, I'm attempting to air layer. I, sneak, I uh, did a sneak peek in here and uh, the, it's callusing up and it's gonna grow roots very soon. So um, look at that, it's a beautiful variety. One of the best pair you can grow because they require very little maintenance. So the fruits are really nice and big and they call it giant for a reason. They are enormous and uh, probably the biggest variety of pear uh, fruit and they're delicious too. So uh, if you want to grow another nice variety um, that produce really nice tasty fruits, uh, the Olympic giant or the Korean giant, that's what they call. 
okay more vegetables so i'm growing a lot of vegetable right now because it's not into the hot months yet in the cool months i grow a lot of vegetables so salad bowl lettuce these grow all over my yard because seeds dropped last season so i just move them into the raised bed and uh, that's usually how i do it i don't start seeds anymore i don't start romaine seeds i don't start salad seeds uh, a shiso or anything like that they just drop and i pick them out of the grass and I put it into the raised bed and that's how they grow. So let me show you uh, an example. You see, that's the salad bowl lettuce seeds right there, seedling. So it, it just keeps growing everywhere. And you see here, these are shis shiso or purple perella. You see how they just grow everywhere in the grass? I just pick those off and grow them in the raised bed. So that's usually how I do it. Okay, and uh, more. I grew some spinach back there. Oh man, I'm gonna have to hurry because the the weather is uh, getting dark now, or the the day is getting dark. So I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon. So spinach, radishes, lettuce, romaine. I just harvested a bunch of radishes today. Here they are. These are radish bulbs. I love growing radishes because they're fast and they're tasty. You see here. Yeah, I love harvesting them. So, and look at this, this is my tobacco plant. I love growing these guys because they're beautiful. They also attract uh, hornworms away, away from my tomatoes. And also, I'm trying to learn how to make cigars. So, <laughs> those are a few reasons why I grow them. And here is my persimmon. This is another fruit tree that you must grow. If, you, if there's a fruit tree that I would recommend, I would recommend persimmons. They're, they're delicious, they're very, very productive, and they can live in any conditions. The snow, whatever, freeze, anything. It, it, they, you can go down to negative, probably negative 15 degrees and they still be fine. So our persimmons are just amazing. And here, some herbs and some radishes. Got cilantro, man, I've been eating so much cilantro. They keep growing back, like they're never ending. So I gave a ton away and every time I cut them, they'll come right back. And here's some Asian greens and some more radishes. Look at these, I'll show you. You see that? These are the, the daikon radishes. The bulbs are getting pretty big, you see it right there? But I also grow them for the leaves. I love eating the leaves. You can eat them raw in a salad, you can stir fry them, you can pickle them. There's so many ways to eat them. They're just, just great plants. They grow like crazy and very fast too. So before the, you use the bulbs, you can just eat the leaves while you wait for the bulbs to grow. So those are, that's an advantage of growing radishes. And also they help fix the soil because the root bulb dig way down there and kind of like loosen up the soil so it, it does help a little bit. And carrots, look at these. Carrots are another cold hardy variety. They grow like crazy. I think I have a bunch of carrots down here. And they, are, they look very beautiful too. See? So those are my carrots. More radishes, you see I love radishes. <laughs> grow them everywhere all kinds of radishes daikon radishes Japanese radishes the regular red radishes you see in the store and here is my herb bed usually I only grow herb in here but um, right now um, it's still a little cool so I, I'm not growing too much of the herbs yet like the basil these are these are propagated I don't grow them from seeds I just propagate them in water and when they root I put them in here so they look pretty sad but uh, pretty soon they're gonna uh, grow like crazy and these are sage another perennial variety of herb that will come back year after year after year doesn't matter how cold it is it survived a snowstorm in Texas that was down to zero degrees Fahrenheit no problem so my baby girl loves strawberries I mean she loved picking it not too much eating but so I decided to grow some strawberries so she can pick some I got some strawberries right here. Got a, a few more right here. So, there it is. And these here are um, Malabar spinach. I harvest a, a bunch of seeds and I, I just 
threw them in here for for I was I thought I was gonna compost them but look at that they started growing like crazy look these are Malabar spinach I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all of these and these are uh, red vein sorrel another variety of cohardy plant survived three years already this is the third year same area same and uh, it just it's beautiful it looks ornamental but you can eat them it doesn't taste as good as the uh, the green one because the red one has a little bitterness to them so if you don't mind the bitterness this would make a great presentation in a salad and it also has a limey flavor so uh, yeah that's a good plant to grow tomato and hydroponic look at this look at all the fruits maintenance free this is a cracky method meaning there's no circulation just water and the plant on top and it just grows on its own lots and lots of flowers already becoming fruits so pretty cool here I have my backup tobacco because I grew a bunch of them and uh, that's uh, where I put them because I if the other one get eaten up these are my backup onions are another cohardy variety it grows like crazy never have to do anything to them and these are Korean radishes I love Korean radishes because we use them for uh, kimchi so they, they grow these massive bulbs I did a video on it already so you can check it out in the channel and I have tomatoes back there starting to take off uh, I think this is a cauliflower maybe a cabbage a piece of it fell when I you see just a square piece right here I threw it in here as compost and it started growing <laughs> so I left it and here we have some more herbs these are cress beautiful they're nice and great they grow like crazy in the snow and it doesn't matter good good plants to grow as well they're just garden cress and this is a celtis lettuce you see how the stems are really nice and tall so wait it for a little bit taller and then I will harvest them so I got lettuce perpetual spinach more cress you see how crazy they grow because I grew those over the the winter months and look at that they're starting to flowers now so the bees are starting to come visit so it's a it's a great herb to grow they're very nice and spicy that's um, comfrey I use the leaves for uh, compost those things grow like crazy they're immortal you, you can't kill those things you just pull them up they'll, they'll grow anywhere and finally we have Mibuna which is an Asian green variety I love these things they're good to eat raw and also in cook them in soups they have a lot of fiber uh, perpetual spinach and finally a raised bed with my asparagus this is my three-year-old asparagus so but if you don't harvest them they will develop a really nice system underneath and then next coming year you will have nice asparagus spear these are the new ones don't harvest the baby ones make sure they're like around the size of your like a pencil or bigger before you harvest but that's it guys thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe